Hello Internet, my name is Mark and I spent a month doing Spanish on the learning platform Duolingo and Italian on the learning platform Rosetta Stone, each for about 20 to 25 minutes a day, and I'm here to give you the rundown on which one's better, but more specifically, which one is better for you. If you haven't already, check out my first video. Here I explain why I chose what languages I chose and why I chose these two platforms, plus more context like why I'm saying which platform is better for specific situations versus which platform is inherently more efficient than the other. As for the release of this video, I wanted an extra month to gather some more data and I'm a full-time student, so getting this video worked on was constant, but quite slow. Apologies in advance if I speak pretty fast, there's a lot of content that I wanna get through, but without further ado, let's jump right into it. First off, we have Duolingo, which is an online learning platform geared toward gamification and letting everyone around the world learn a language for free. Duolingo has over 30 languages for English speakers, from Spanish to Arabic to Klingon, and have English learning modules for people who want to learn English. Aside from these great features, Duolingo is totally free for anyone who wants to learn a language, and according to this tweet, it remains a top grossing learning app. The Rosetta Stone was discovered in 1799 and helped translate Egyptian hieroglyphics. It is from this origin of language translation that Rosetta Stone gets its well-suited name. Rosetta Stone works to provide people of all ages a detailed curriculum to learn languages from German and Italian to Greek and Vietnamese. With 25 languages and tutoring as a promising up-and-coming feature, Rosetta Stone stands as one of the first language learning platforms to a widely accepted audience, and it's only $12 a month to learn a language for the rest of your life. The immediate question I want to answer here is why you would pay for Rosetta Stone when Duolingo offers language learning entirely for free. I would also like to know that Duolingo offers a $10 a month Duolingo Plus subscription, so there are some features I'm leaving out of this comparison, such as content downloading. So anyway, the question boils down to what are you buying exactly? The simple answer is the level of detail in each curriculum. Rosetta Stone is pay per language, while Duolingo gives you access to all their languages for no extra cost. In other words, it remains free no matter how much you want to learn. So here we see the Italian curriculum for Rosetta Stone on my account. We have 24 units, each consisting of hours of content. Rosetta Stone has extra resources from articles to practice your speaking and some games, which are still flash games, but they look good and get the job done. The lessons are each detailed to an extensive degree, while there's clear evidence of something called morphological analysis and tons of thought put into each lesson. Now, let's take a look at Duolingo. Your progress is measured by what they call a tree. It's very detailed, and you can see these little castle icons that identify where you are in your language learning journey. You also see bubbles of different colors, and these are called crown levels, each one associated with a sephir level or proficiency in language. However, Spanish is a popular language, Duolingo's most popular language, which is why I partly chose it for this comparison. Jumping on over to the Arabic course, and no denying that Arabic is a complicated language, we see it contains much less content. Duolingo has made it clear that language is in beta, and as it grows in popularity, its complexity will over time. While French and Spanish have Duolingo podcasts on Spotify, and a Duolingo stories feature, none of the other languages do. So a quick summary, Rosetta Stone has all of their languages sold to you at a fully fleshed out capacity. If you're looking to learn a more complex language like Arabic or Japanese, Rosetta Stone offers several resources to get you started for each language offered, even tailoring a specific learning curriculum to learn for your purposes, such as focuses on conversation or reading. Duolingo, on the other hand, is less directed. The Arabic and Japanese trees are a lot less fleshed out than the Spanish and French trees. However, Duolingo has really nailed the gamified aspect, especially the leaderboards. Okay, now that's out of the way, I'm gonna throw some terms at you throughout this video and I'm gonna quickly explain them. First of all, we have Sefer, which is essentially a measurement of language proficiency. It has A tier, B tier, and C tier. Essentially, if you are A1, you can say hi, goodbye, and that's about it. If you are C2, you are native in that language. You were born and raised speaking that language. Then there's morphological analysis. It's a very complicated process, but in terms of how I will be referencing it in this video, what's important is that if I show you this image here and tell you the word Mela, and that it's an Italian word, then maybe you might make the association that this is a mela in Italian, and now you know that an apple in Italian is una mela. Lastly is a term that I call the English middleman. We think in our native languages, and for me, that's English. For instance, learning French in school, we often use English as a bridge between the language we're learning and the way we think about it. When we first learn my name is, you learn je m'appelle. However, in reality, je m'appelle is I call myself, but the grammar is a little switched around. Getting rid of this English middleman can be done by either not using it or through implicit learning. You say je m'appelle enough and you don't have to think, my name is je m'appelle, before you say what you want to say. Anyway, done with the terms, let's kick it off and go straight into Duolingo. 
Duolingo, the gamified language learning platform that feels positively rewarding as you gain experience throughout the day. They've mastered the ability to get people to stick with their software, and while their extreme plan says to get 50 experience a day, which would be about 10 to 15 minutes, maybe more, depending on the complexity of the levels you're on on Duolingo, you can keep going way beyond. Recently, there have been some leaderboards added to the website, and those have been keeping me on the French grind alongside keeping me motivated for Spanish. Duolingo is great for learning a language in your downtime in a relatively non-serious atmosphere. I've been able to pick out Spanish words from conversations that I've heard around the city. What I love about Duolingo, aside from the wonderfully competitive leaderboards, is the way that they teach you about the structure of language. If you're learning a language casually, you could go through the tree and do each bubble at level one, ignoring levels two through four, and get to the end relatively quickly. I wouldn't recommend this because you'll end up forgetting everything and the way Duolingo works is reinforcing what you get wrong. If you want to go a little bit more advanced, do levels 2 and 3. If you're looking to get pretty advanced in the language, go for levels 4 and 5. There are more lessons per bubble and they get more difficult, but it's much more worth it. The ability to choose your own difficulty in this sense is a hugely important aspect of Duolingo. Duolingo also offers little hint bubbles where you can get a more in-depth analysis of what the lesson tries to teach you, although not all the languages have them. I love learning about the rules of language and this is easily one of my favorite features because if I'm wondering, wait, does this word end like this because it's plural or is it because of the gender agreement, then I can quickly look it up within Duolingo itself and get a quick answer. Alongside the lessons, when you're learning things, Duolingo has about 10 to 15 little sentence prompts given to you. And if you get one wrong, it gets thrown to the back of the line so that when you finish the rest of the prompts, all the ones that you got wrong show up again. This is hugely helpful because it uses space repetition to force you to remember what you might have forgotten. There's a link in the description for more information on how Duolingo does this, and they've made it quite public, but the system does have its flaws. When you get a question wrong, Duolingo will give you the correct answer. For example, if I was translating from French, je mange une pomme, that means I'm eating an apple, and I put the wrong word for mange, which is eating, you see the sentence saying, I'm eating an apple, it gets thrown to the back of the line, you come back again, you say, oh, this question, the answer was, I'm eating an apple. And you don't try to correct the specific mistake that you made. So when new material is presented, sometimes I get a little thrown off. Duolingo also relies heavily on translation, relative to that English middleman I mentioned earlier. Duolingo has you associate words with words versus words with images or words with meaning. While using Duolingo, if you're taking it seriously, it's incredibly important to not let it do everything for you. No language learning platform is great and will get you to fluency alone. So really thinking of the meaning of words and saying sentences out loud as you learn them on Duolingo is pretty important. Duolingo doesn't have speaking and listening activities for every language, and I believe the speaking is only on mobile anyway, and to be honest, the listening activities are pretty brutal on Duolingo. Sometimes it's hard to tell what the speaker is saying, even on slow mode, and especially when you're learning a language as a beginner, it doesn't really make sense. Overall, Duolingo is fun and worth it. Sure, these listening activities can be pretty crap sometimes, but if you write out the sentence you hear and you think more about it and say, oh, wait a minute, there's an article missing there that I didn't hear the person say, it can actually be kind of helpful. On the other hand, Rosetta Stone does almost the exact opposite and uses virtually no English at all. Rosetta Stone isn't Duolingo. I'm not denying that. It's not a game, it's not free, and sometimes it's hard to stay incentivized, but when you have a true purpose, something beyond a streak, some experience, or a leaderboard, then Rosetta Stone having a system of inherent motivation isn't relevant. Anyway, I jumped into this Rosetta Stone section by talking about how it didn't have an English middleman, so let's jump right into that. What does it mean to have no English middleman? Well, Rosetta Stone shows you an image, and it shows you a word. And then you create the association, and you have the new word for that object. It's actually kind of funny because I changed my phone to French recently and Rosetta Stone recognized this, but it didn't need to change anything because it didn't need to use a language that I already knew to learn a new language. As you learn more, you have the opportunity to pair even more words together, eventually building up to sentences and common phrases. The entire system is fantastic, and the fact that you're getting a full product is very clear. But one of their strongest features is their speech recognition software. It's not flawless, but it is pretty good. You can even change how strict it is on your pronunciation. The important part of this is not the fact that it can recognize that I'm speaking, but it more makes me speak out loud and does correct my pronunciation. Sometimes it gets really annoying, but there's nothing stopping you from telling Rosetta Stone that you don't have a microphone and can't really speak right now. I'd recommend pushing past that a little each time though because speaking is so important. And I found that my speaking in Italian is much better than my speaking in Spanish. Rosetta Stone does have a bunch of other features as well, from small little flash games and talking to people all around the world. However, my favorite and arguably the most useful feature of Rosetta Stone are their stories. There are around four articles per unit. 
And essentially, a story is a small article, with each one introducing new vocabulary with the same level of grammar you are at, and staying relevant to the appropriate unit. It's absolutely amazing. I have yet to do more of these articles, but the most important part about them is that it teaches you application of the language. You can even record yourself and play it back to critique yourself and listen to someone else telling it. However, as much as I've looked around, Rosetta Stone doesn't seem to have resources that fall back on the use of language, similar to Duolingo's little bubble features. Now for me, and this may sound odd, but I love the rules of language. I love learning the grammar and syntax of languages, such as verb endings and common patterns that you might see throughout languages. Rosetta Stone has no default resources for this. From what I can tell, they're simply not there. On the mobile app, you can sometimes see the translation of the sentence you're given. And yes, Rosetta Stone does have a mobile app, and no, it's not just a bad port. Jumping back to a broader scope, both of these platforms have amazing mobile applications. In the fourth video in this series, I'll be looking more into how you can spend more time on your phone learning a language versus infinitely scrolling on social media. Both apps can be pulled out used, put away again, pulled out again later, resume your lesson, just as easily as the other. If you're gonna let mobile application experience cloud your judgment, I ask that you don't and let the rest of this video make that judgment for you, not just the user experience of the mobile apps. It's rubric time. In my first video, I mentioned I'd have two rubrics to compare these two platforms, but I trashed the one that tested my reading, writing, speaking, and listening comprehension because that was more of a judgment on my own ability to learn the language and less of the ability of the language platforms to teach me those languages. Now, in regards to this primary rubric, I did cross a lot of things off because there are some things I simply just didn't get to, such as conversational fluency, and thus I couldn't give an accurate judgment. Duolingo uses English in a pretty productive fashion with their speech bubbles, but it's pretty tough when it comes to the translations. Rosetta Stone absolutely removes English, but I docked a few points because you don't have any resources within Rosetta Stone to look up the rules of language. Now this does make sense because Rosetta Stone is to teach you a new language by using only that new language and the images that they give you. For example, they don't have to make rules for French, English, Italian, Spanish, speakers, all trying to learn another language. I'm sorry, but Duolingo's default listening activities are totally garbage. Especially for someone learning to speak a language, even on slow mode, they're really hard to understand. There are additional activities called Duolingo Stories, which are great. They're done more professionally and slower for beginners and are much more interactive. Rosetta Stone does have listening activities. It's pretty much all listening, but unfortunately lacked a few direct activities I would personally like to learn from. Duolingo easily gets full points here and Rosetta Stone's pretty close. I love their stories feature and they have you read words and sentences, but their typing feature makes me so mad. If you forget a letter, it just shows a little highlight on the letter that you got wrong. It doesn't tell you what you get wrong. And sometimes capitalization is important. Sometimes it's not. And it really doesn't explain that very well. And it really annoys me. Due to Duolingo's nature, it doesn't keep the courses too fresh by default, but it is good because you can jump around different lessons. For example, you can go through an entire portion of the tree at level one and then jump around as you do levels two, three, four, and five. Rosetta Stone also does a similar thing where you can do basic vocabulary and keep building off of that. However, you're much more free to jump around to unit 12 before you finish unit 11 and so on and so forth. This is a tough one to measure because it's pretty subjective, but I definitely say that Duolingo wins this largely due to its repetitiveness. I found that in Rosetta Stone at the end during the unit tests, there are so many words and phrases to choose from, but the unit test was only looking for relatively few specific ones. Another tough one to measure, but I did keep it in because I found that, you know, throughout the city, hearing both Italian and I guess more often Spanish, I could make out the words of the language and understand what language it was, and maybe even some common phrases, and not just hear it as, you know, the mumbo jumbo that we do when we don't learn a language. Final verdict. So all in all, Duolingo scores a 44 and Rosetta Stone scores a 46, both of them out of 60 points. Now, do take this with a grain of salt because it's pretty subjective on how I learn and how I prefer to learn languages. And so in the following minute or so, I've outlined a few specific scenarios to help you decide what's better, Duolingo or Rosetta Stone. Are you a student learning a language and you need some extra help outside of class? I definitely recommend Duolingo. It's a great supplemental source, it's free, and you can take a placement test in case you're in a higher level. Are you traveling and need to learn a language conversationally? I'd go with Rosetta Stone. You have a clear purpose on why you need to learn your language. And also Rosetta Stone has some pretty helpful phrases and tips on their mobile app that you can pull out at any time. Are you looking for just a fun and relaxed way to learn a language? Go with Duolingo. If you're a kid or you have a kid and you want a fun way to learn a language, Duolingo's fantastic. They've really nailed the gamification aspect. Are you learning a language with a specific purpose in mind, such as getting better specifically at writing or specifically at conversation? I'd go with Rosetta Stone. They have this pretty cool feature where it can tailor your curriculum to give you more activities that are relevant for what you want to get good at in the language of your choice. 
If you're looking to learn a language that's less popular and harder to learn from English, such as Arabic, Japanese, or Russian, I would start off with Duolingo because then you can say, okay, this language is great, let's go with it, or eh, not so much. And if you choose to go with it, definitely get Rosetta Stone. They have a professional course right out of the box and it's fully fleshed out. All in all, it comes down to what your scenario is. For me, for French, I'm using Duolingo because it's pretty lax, I'm pretty good at French already, and I'm just learning vocab words that I don't already know. As I've learned from Duolingo suddenly switching things up and Rosetta Stone's end of unit tests, you will have to do some learning outside of the classroom if you want rapid success. For example, make some flashcards for the words that you have a more difficult time remembering and create an emotional connection with those words. Not only do you have to learn a language, but you also have to learn how to think in that language. For example, I've been trying to journal almost every day in a different language to get myself to think, to find the words that I use often, the things that are peculiar to me, and ways to exercise that. So words that I'm bad at, write them down, listen to podcasts, try to understand conversation. But I will get more into that in my next video when I interview several second, third, fourth, etc. language speakers and talk more about those strategies that have helped me and I hope will help you learn your language more efficiently. Now that's the end. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this has educated you in what language learning platform you wanna use. If you wanna stay updated on this mini series, I have two more videos planned. Go ahead and subscribe down below, like the video, share it, leave a comment on what language you might wanna learn. And whichever platform you use, even if you use both, it can be quite a commitment. But nevertheless, just five, maybe 10 minutes a day can teach you a new language for the rest of your life, and I'd definitely recommend it. So thanks for watching, have a good one, and as always, don't forget to stay awesome.